The Power of Purity Podcast. Real talk for real men who struggle with real temptation in the real world, who are ready for real answers and real success. The Power of Purity Podcast. Welcome to the Power of Purity Podcast, the show that empowers men to experience their sexual gift in a healthier way. Now here's your host, Tony Ingrassia. Hey guys, welcome back to the Power of Purity podcast. I'm really glad you could join me today. And I'm excited about what we're talking about because I'm going to continue uh, what I started the past couple episodes, the high price of pornography, and this is actually part number four. And I've been working my way through 10 principles or 10 prices that I believe a Christian man is paying for the privilege or for the indulgence of pornography. And as we've already mentioned, guys try to kind of justify and rationalize and minimize porn and think, oh, it's not that big a deal. Everybody does it. Who's it really hurting? What's it really hurting? Especially if nobody knows about it. And uh, I would advocate, guys, that we're paying a much bigger price than we realize when we indulge in pornography. And if you've been with me the past several episodes, I'm sure you'll agree that we're realizing together that, holy cow, there, there, there is a big price for the indulgence of porn. The thesis of the message is you're paying a much bigger price for watching porn than you think you're paying. And of the 10 prices that we're going to cover I've already covered eight of them in the past three episodes, so if you haven't heard that, you're welcome to go back and listen. But in the way of quick review, number one is porn negatively affects your satisfaction with your wife. Number two, porn divides and diminishes your sexual interest and energy toward your wife. Number three, porn drives a wedge between you and your wife whether she knows or doesn't know you're looking at porn. Number four, porn will provoke a great struggle and insecurity in your wife. Number five, porn will cultivate and strengthen the power of lust in your heart and life. Number six, porn will negatively affect your relationship with God. Number seven, porn causes men to have a diminished view of women. Number eight, Porn violates the very purpose and design of sex. And that brings us today to number nine, where we're going to continue. Number nine, porn will pollute your mind. And as we begin this point, I'd just like to note that I think there's an important distinction to be made between this point, porn will pollute your mind, and our fifth point previously, which was porn will cultivate and strengthen the power of lust in your heart and life. While it's true that porn empowers lust in your heart and life, we're talking about something very different here when we're talking about having your mind polluted by porn. The Bible has a lot to say about what's going on in a person's mind. And what it reveals is that what's going on in a person's mind is incredibly important. Proverbs 23, verse 7 says that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Or said another way, whatever's going on in your heart and your head will inevitably work its way out into your life. Uh, Maybe another way to say it, whatever lives on the inside of you is eventually going to come out on the outside of you. So you better be real careful about what's going on on the inside because whatever's going on on the inside is going to inevitably come out on the outside. And not only that, but the ability to control your thoughts is essential to emotional and spiritual health and maturity. Philippians 4 verse 8, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 through 5, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. 
We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And then Romans chapter 12, verse 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, I've worked with many men over the years, you guys, and so many men report this concept of what I would call the big screen in your mind. Imagine the concept uh, that you have a big movie screen in your head, and every time you become aroused or involved in a a sexual situation, some movie begins to play on the big screen in your mind. And as noted in the previous point concerning men who are struggling with PIED, porn-induced erectile dysfunction, many of these men are simply unable to function sexually unless they go into their mental reserve and begin to play a pornographic scene that they've previously seen on the big screen of their mind, which is really very sad because it suggests that I'm not really able to be turned on by you, another person that I happen to be with, my wife, the person I'm having this sexual experience with, and I really need porn on the big screen in my mind to get turned on so I can then hopefully have sex with you as a person, which is sad because it means that there's really there, there really aren't just the two of us here in this sexual experience, me and you, But there are really three of us here, which is me and you and the porn in my head, which I need to play on the big screen in order to perform sexually while I'm with you. And by the way, the idea of the big screen is complementary to the idea of this question. What's the biggest and most powerful sex organ in a man's body? And guess what? It's not his hands and it's not his mouth. It's not his tongue. It's not even his penis. The biggest and most powerful sex organ in a man's body is his mind. And almost without exception, when a man's involved with pornography, it will be virtually impossible for him to be involved in a sexual situation with another person without the big screen in his head beginning to play the pornographic images and movies that he's experienced or at least it happens a lot, and a lot of guys report this. And I would advocate that this is a primary benefit of being free from pornography as a Christian man, because as you stop using porn, and you distance yourself from porn more and more, and your mind is being freed and cleansed of all the pornography you've consumed over the years, you'll become able to be more and more present to your wife while making love, and she will become more and more the exclusive object of your sexual desire, attention, interest, and focus as God intends. So now, when you make love with your wife, there really are only two of you there, you and your wife, as God always intended it to be, because your mind is no longer polluted by the hundreds and thousands of porn images that have lived there in the past. And that brings me to my 10th and final price that men pay for the indulgence of pornography. Number 10, porn passes a curse to your children. The Bible has much to say about curses, bondages, captivities, familiar spirits, and generational sin. And I actually talk at length about this concept in a couple other sessions of the Power of Purity Conference. And if you're interested in more information about this concept of curses upon your children, then I encourage you to listen to session 16 of the conference, which is uh, Breaking the Power of Generational Sin, and session 23, which is the Renunciation of Our Fathers. But just to share a few thoughts here for our purposes, I do believe that your involvement with pornography will pass a curse to your children, and that in the same way we described in point three above, that porn will drive a wedge between you and your wife, even if your wife doesn't know that you're looking at porn. 
Porn will also pass a sexual curse or a sexual weakness or a proclivity towards sexual sin to your children, even if they don't know that you're looking at porn. And if I had to choose just one word to quickly explain this spiritual dynamic that I believe is a powerful reality, it would be the word access. And what I mean, guys, is this. When a man's involved in pornography and a man's given himself over to pornography and a man is viewing and participating and using pornography on a regular basis and a man's even accessing pornography on a regular basis in the context of his very own home with his children in the very next room or or just above him upstairs or two rooms over in the very same house. And there's therefore a kind of spirit or vibe or energy alive in this man's own heart and life. And therefore alive in the context of his home. And his children are living in this very environment and context. Not only the physical environment and physical context, but more importantly, they're living in the spiritual environment and the spiritual context of this home that's being created by the Father, who, by the way, is the spiritual head of the home and the pastor of the home. And this man has alive in his own heart a significant level of lust and lasciviousness and sensuality and concupiscence and maybe even a significant level of perversion alive in his own heart and mind, maybe because he likes to watch homosexual porn or he likes to watch women-on-women lesbian porn. And because all this sexual and spiritual energy is alive and moving and potent and swirling perpetually around this man's life and is therefore also alive and moving and potent and swirling perpetually in the context of this home, and these children are growing up in this very home under the spiritual authority of this man as their father, would we therefore be surprised if somehow, mystically, spiritually, in the context of of spiritual reality and the dynamics of the spirit world and the kingdom of God, that through all these nuances and influences, that somehow these children would be inclined to be influenced themselves by the very lust and lasciviousness and sensuality and concupiscence and perversion that they're perpetually exposed to as they're being raised in this home. Or said another way, in the verbiage of the Bible, in Exodus chapter 20, which, by the way, is the very passage of the Ten Commandments, Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 through 6, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not worship them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations to those who love me and keep my commandments." The Bible has quite a bit to say, as I noted previously, about this concept of generational sin, curses, bondages, familiar spirits, and how these things uh, are alive and powerful in the context of families and how these things move from one generation to the next generation. Another scripture, Exodus chapter 34, verse 6 and 7 Then the Lord passed in front of him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in loving kindness and truth, who keeps loving kindness for thousands, who forgives iniquity, transgression, and sin. Yet he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished, visiting the iniquity of fathers on their children, and on their grandchildren to the third and fourth generations. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but I intuitively sense that it's true, that whatever's going on in dad's heart and life is something that uh, creates a spiritual weakness or vulnerability in his children. 
it's pretty scary, you guys. And I'll just tell you this, that when I was fighting my own battle of purity, when my marriage was an absolute mess, and Sherry and I were involved in this prolonged therapeutic process, going to counseling, trying to deal with the disaster of our lives and our stories and our sexual histories and our marriage and just the the big mess, sometimes I felt overwhelmed and I felt like giving up and I felt like this is too hard. Maybe we should just go ahead and get divorced. But then I would think of my sons. And you see, God is so shrewd the way that God deals with us. I Sometimes I picture the Christian life kind of like a chess match, you see. And in a sense, God is my enemy because God is uh, pushing his way deeper and deeper and deeper into my heart and life. And I, I see God advancing in my heart, trying to apprehend areas of my heart that haven't fallen to him yet, you see. So in a way, I'm in this fight with God. And some skirmishes, some battles uh, go quickly, and I surrender to God, and God wins, and God apprehends more territory in my heart. But other times, I'm fighting God and fighting God, and I'm and the fight is intense and it's hot, and I'm not given up as God's trying to uh, take over more ground in my heart. But anyway, this metaphor, one time I thought of the metaphor of a chess match. The Christian life is kind of like a chess match with God. And the goal, of course, is to get your opponent in checkmate, right? So God is advancing toward me. God's coming toward me. And uh, God makes a move. He's trying to get my, my king and checkmate so that I'm not my own king anymore, you see. And he wins this battle. He wins this game. He conquers me. He gets me in checkmate. So he's advancing, so I make a move to get out of his way or to counterattack. So God makes a move, and then I make a move, and then God makes a move, and then I make a move. And as God is advancing, I'm trying to move to the right, move to the left. I'm trying to wiggle out of God's advance, you see. I'm trying to escape. I'm trying to get away. And I've got a move left. I've got another move. I can move here. But as God advances very slowly, it's as if he's pushing me tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter into a metaphorical corner where pretty soon I can't move to the right. There's a wall there. I can't move back. There's a wall. I can't move to the left. I I have no more wiggle room. And God gets right in front of me. And God says, checkmate, Tony. I win. But the point I'm making here, you guys, uh, concerns my position of influence and spiritual authority over my children. And the, the point is that when I was in my own battle with God and I was in this therapeutic process and I was in this very difficult marriage and my wife never wanted to have sex with me and this big mess that I was involved with, sometimes I wanted to give up. I thought this is just too hard. But then I would think of my kids and I thought, Tony, you can't give up. You, you just can't give up. You see, God was shrewd enough that he had given me sons. And I think God knew that my sons would kind of be like uh, anchors on my soul. And that when I wanted to give up and I wasn't sure that I was motivated anymore for my own welfare and my own well-being, that I couldn't turn my back on my kids in a sense, and that I would be motivated for them, for their welfare and their well-being. Or maybe another way to say it, I realized that I wasn't fighting this battle just for me, Tony and Gracia, but I was fighting this battle on behalf of my sons. Because if I didn't do the hard work, and if I didn't deal with these issues, and if I didn't deal with my sexual addiction, if I didn't get this thing figured out, and if I didn't learn to control sex instead of being controlled by sex, then I somehow intuitively knew that the same struggle that lives in me is going to be alive and powerful in the hearts and lives of my sons. And I don't want to consign them to have to go through this battle and have all the problems and issues in their lives and their sexuality and their marriages that their father has struggled with. So if I can do this work, 
and I can make advances in the spiritual realm and the kingdom of God, I can break this sexual addiction off of my life, then that's going to accrue to the benefit and the well-being and the prosperity of my children's lives and my children's marriages and my children's spiritual journeys. So guys, realize we're not just fighting for ourselves. We're fighting for our children. And what higher price could there be for the indulgence of pornography? And we need to think and realize the profound implications that we hold as the spiritual leaders and pastors of our home and the position of spiritual authority over our children and our grandchildren. And I think that this should motivate us, guys, to realize, holy cow, pornography simply isn't worth it. And so, dear friend, with with these thoughts in mind, and dear listener of the Power of Purity podcast, can I ask you a couple questions as we move toward the close of this topic that we've been considering for the past several episodes entitled The High Price of Pornography. And we've looked at these 10 prices that men pay for their involvement with pornography. And we're discovering that, holy cow, I'm paying a much bigger price for porn in my life than I thought I was paying. Do you believe that your involvement with pornography will make your children and grandchildren vulnerable to a sexual curse, a sexual weakness, or a sexual proclivity, a proclivity towards sexual sin. If you knew that your sexual weakness was being passed to your children and grandchildren, would that be important to you? In my own personal situation, I have no doubt that my father's issues with sex profoundly affected my life and harmed my life as his son. And as a result, a significant part of my own healing process included doing the spiritual work of recognizing and renouncing the unholy and ungodly influences that were holding power in my life and soul as a result of the generational strongholds that existed in my life through my familial heritage. And in addition, I realized that as I was fighting for my own sexual freedom and purity, that I was highly motivated by the firm belief that I was fighting not just for my own personal freedom and purity, Tony and Gracia, but also for the spiritual legacy I was leaving for my children and grandchildren. And in view of these thoughts, I would encourage you gentlemen to continue in the fight for your own purity, not just for your sake and for your life, but also for the welfare of your own children and grandchildren. And in conclusion, I'd like to say just a couple things in closing, guys. Do not be deceived, gentlemen. Pornography is not a benign force in your life. You cannot consume pornography and not be affected in negative and destructive and harmful ways any more than you can drink cyanide and not be affected in negative and harmful and destructive ways. So please, Don't allow the enemy to continue to lullaby you into believing that your use and involvement with pornography is no big deal or that it isn't hurting anybody, especially if nobody knows about it, or that it's not that big a deal if you look at porn because so many other guys look at porn. Not only is there a price for pornography, but there's a high price for pornography. And I will promise you guys two promises. Number one is that you are paying a very high price if you're using pornography in your life. And number two, I promise you that the price you're paying is not worth the benefit that you're receiving. In this episode, we've learned 10 principles concerning the high price of pornography. And those 10 principles are number one, Porn negatively affects your satisfaction with your wife. Number two, porn divides and diminishes your sexual interest and energy toward your wife. Number three, porn drives a wedge between you and your wife, whether she knows or doesn't know you're looking at porn. Number four, 
Porn will provoke a great struggle and insecurity in your wife. Number five, porn will cultivate and strengthen the power of lust in your heart and life. Number six, porn will negatively affect your relationship with God. Number seven, porn causes men to have a diminished view of women. Number eight, porn violates the very purpose and design of sex. Number nine, Porn will pollute your mind. And number 10, porn passes a curse to your children. Our thesis has been this, you guys. You're paying a much bigger price for watching porn than you think you're paying. And let me just say in closing that if you'll stay with me through this Power of Purity podcast, and if you would consider accessing the Power of Purity conference which is 30 sessions where I develop and unpack these concepts and principles of the importance of sexual purity, then you're going to continue to learn additional principles and strategies that are going to empower you to control sex instead of being controlled by sex, to bring your sexual gift under the authority of Christ, and to be a healthier person sexually than you've ever been before. And uh, before I close, you guys, it's just on my heart. I'm just going to go ahead and say a prayer as we finish up this little series of four episodes here, The High Price of Pornography. Father in heaven, thank you, God, that you've been with us as we've journeyed through this session, The High Price of Pornography. And Lord, uh, truly sin is deceitful, and we tend to lie to ourselves, Lord. We lie to ourselves, and then we lie to others, and then we even lie to you, Lord. But I believe that uh, we're seeing that, that it is a lie, that uh, porn is a big deal. When we tell ourselves it's no big deal, who's it hurting? What are the consequences, especially if nobody knows? And look at all the men that do it anyway. So what's the big deal? Well, it is a big deal, Lord. And Lord, I just pray uh, for my brothers. I pray, Lord, that uh, there would be an explosion of the light of God and the truth of God, and the healing of God, and the redemption of God in our hearts and lives. And I pray against the power of pornography in our hearts and lives. I believe God. I know that there was a time that I had a sexual addiction. And if you could could see me with spiritual eyes, you would have seen chains on my soul that were holding me captive like a prisoner. And I know that there's so many brothers, maybe even brothers listening to this prayer right now, who have lived in captivity to these chains of bondage and addiction. And they've been enslaved to pornography, watching porn and involved with porn, maybe since they were a young teenager for years and years and years using pornography, and trying to convince themselves that it's no big deal, I'm not hurting anyone. And God, I just pray that uh, there would be this explosion of light and truth so that these lies would be banished and rebuked and removed from our hearts and lives, Lord, and that we would see that indeed we are paying a very high price for the indulgence of pornography. And I pray, God, for my brothers, that you would fill all of us with the Holy Spirit and that we would be empowered to resist pornography, to say no to pornography, and that pornography would no longer hold the power in our lives and our souls that it's held, that these 10 prices that we've been paying, Lord, that we would no longer pay these prices and that the redemption of God and the healing of God would flow into our hearts and our lives and our situations. So we just acknowledge that we need you, God. We acknowledge that we cannot change our own hearts and lives. We acknowledge that we need you to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. So Lord, we submit to you, God. We say that the name of Jesus is higher than pornography. We say that the name Jesus is more powerful than the power of pornography. Oh God, we cry out to you, oh God. Help us, help us, Lord. Help the brothers, Lord. 
may the curse of pornography be removed from our hearts, from our lives. Forgive us, O oh God, forgive us, Lord, for what we've done, for how we've indulged in this thing that's so displeasing and dishonoring to you, Lord. Forgive us for how we've allowed pornography to harm our lives, to harm our relationship with you, O oh God. How we've allowed pornography to harm our marriages. How we've allowed pornography to harm our children, Lord, as we've allowed this evil, dark force in our very homes and in our very hearts and lives as the spiritual leaders and pastors of our home and of our children. Lord, forgive us for these things. Lord, heal our hearts. Rebuke and renounce pornography from us, O God. Do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Lord, we say that we love you. We say that you're awesome. We put our hope in you, O God, and we pray these things in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Guys, thanks for being here with me. God bless you. There's a high price for pornography. I'll look forward to seeing you in our next episode. And until then, thanks for listening. God bless you and have an awesome day. Thanks for listening. Visit powerofpurity.org for more resources and information. And if this podcast has been helpful or encouraging, please invite a friend to listen. Until next time, remember, there's power in purity. Bring your sexual gift under the authority of God.